Welcome to another edition of On Point. I'm Andy Martins for Monday, November 4th. We have another encore edition of Future Sault Ste. Marie and Katie Elliott. It was such a thrill having her on last week and she'll be with us live in the studio coming up right after these messages. Education is everything. Supporting your true sense of purpose. Here, you'll learn from professors who will understand you, who will challenge you, and offer you support on your journey. Here, you'll study programs built on real values. Business, technology, science, arts and social sciences, always geared to make a positive difference. Here, you'll have a chance to assist in faculty research, leaving your mark wherever you go. Here, you'll focus on what matters to you and impact the world around you. Algoma University. Come take a closer look. Welcome back to On Point. I'm Andy Martins for Monday, November 4th. We're live on On TV and live on Facebook. And I'm thrilled again because Future Sault Ste. Marie is an important piece of this city. I've been here for almost 30 years and nothing has been as important as this endeavor to rebuild into a rebirth of this city. And Katie Elliott is the communications coordinator for Future Sault Ste. Marie, and she's here with me live in the studio. Nobody knows this stuff better than Katie. Well, good morning. Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me back. No problem. I thought this time we want to talk about and start with um, the film and television piece that we didn't get to last week uh, because we just saw the film a couple of days ago that was filmed here during the summer with Brooke Dorsey was the star. I hope I'm saying that right. And how important is something like this for this city? It's, it's very important. So part of, uh, part of Future Sault Ste. Marie is film and television uh, production. Uh, we do have a dedicated staff person, uh, Jennifer Mathewson, who's our, our film and television uh, coordinator, and she's doing a fantastic job. So like you mentioned, we just had uh, a film premiere, a uh, Hallmark movie, Nostalgic right. Christmas premiere uh, last week. Uh, Friday on the W Network in Canada and so it's it's really exciting I can also remember you know driving down Queen Street in June and I think it was in June and uh, you know seeing the snow everywhere and you know it's it was uh, very exciting and not only is it um, you know, people, local people get involved, but there's also a huge economic impact in the community. Right. So in 2019, we had, uh, to date so far, we had four, uh, we had four films, we had one web series, we had two children's uh, TV episodes filmed in Sault Ste. Marie. And in total, that has brought approximately, in direct and indirect spend, about $5 million to the community. So wow. that's a huge impact. That's filling hotel rooms, uh, crews that are here, they're eating at local restaurants, they're shopping, they're doing touristy things. So there's a huge impact on the community and we have the, 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 these films and television series being produced here. 
So uh, you can definitely keep your eye out for more of that happening in 2020. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but there definitely will be more uh, more productions here. And uh, Jennifer Matheson has been invaluable to that to that process because she acts as a kind of a, a coordinator between the films and the city and permitting and all of those fun things, um, as well as helping with locations and uh, helping find crew members, that sort of thing. So it's been really positive. You'll give us the scoop here on On Point. <laughs> I'm sure you will, Katie. But Definitely. talk to me a little bit about how much background work goes into getting this film here. It's It just doesn't happen in a one week period. No, it doesn't. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, one really positive thing that's going for Northern Ontario with film and television production right now are the grants through NOHFC. So right. those have been extremely yeah. important and we really um, we really hope to see those continue. Um, and the Sioux, you know, the Sioux is great for productions because we have the Sioux College uh, program uh, uh, in Sault Ste. Marie. So there is a great place for graduates who are coming out of that program to work directly on film. So there's crew here. Um, we also have a lot of diverse filming locations. You know, you can be in a, you know, a downtown city, not like skyscrapers, but you know, <laughs> certainly a downtown community right. one right. minute. And then you can be, you know, a grow cap in the water 20 minutes later doing a scene there. Um, then you can be on a farm in another 20 minutes. So that diversity for productions is, is really, uh, is really attractive. Um, but you're right, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes to get those movies here. Um, you know, Jen does a lot of work reaching out to different films, producers. Uh, they have, uh, they'll bring people up here to do tours, so familiarization tours to see where the different locations are. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth. And of course, we're competing not only with other communities in Northern Ontario, but we're competing with places around the world, right? So, right. Um, but the more and more we do here, the more infrastructure we build here, uh, the more attractive Sault Ste. Marie will be. Um, Jen was also successful uh, working uh, with the city to uh, bring rolling pitchers to Sault Ste. Marie. So that's a post-production company. Uh, they've moved in on Queen Street. That's the building uh, where Jory's is, where the big uh, horse mural. So they're on the second floor there, and they're doing post-production work for f films and movies all over the world. Um, and then the post-production work is done in Sault Ste. Marie. So that's employing um, uh, local people, local graduates from the Sioux College program. Uh, so that's really, that's also really exciting. But as you said, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to get these movies here. And Brooke, the star of this Christmas movie, mm -hmm. was born in Toronto. So it must have been exciting for her to come back to Canada and Ontario to do this film. Yeah, it was. And I think, you know, she has great things to say about filming in Sault Ste. Marie, as do most we're all actors and producers and directors that come to the city. We have so many testimonials of right. people who have filmed here because they feel welcomed in the community. They feel supported. They feel, um, you know, I think there was a, you know, a buzz and excitement in the community for sure when these movies are filmed here, but there's also a lot of support from the city and they feel welcomed here. And so I think that's another reason why we're going to see more and more productions here. We could almost set up our own Groman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood <laughs> where we get these films. <laughs> yeah. They can have their footprints in the, sand, in the clay and kind of thing. So that's mm. great. But uh, one uh, further, uh, one last note on this topic. Um, I guess Jen's <coughs> job is made a little bit easier with the Canadian dollar the way it is. That <coughs> gives us that uh, leg room and uh, pu uh, in, it gives us that uh, push to attract these people. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. That's, uh, you know, the dollar definitely helps, especially when you're talking to producers who are in L.A., for example. Um, the costs associated here, the affordability is definitely here compared to other uh, places in the U.S. Mm -hmm, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Um, Katie, what is your greatest thrill working for, uh, with future Sault Ste. Marie up to this point? Uh, can you tell me one thing that has really thrilled you or it's a combination of things? Yeah, it's a combination of things, but like at the top of the show, you had mentioned how, you know, you've been here for 30 years and this is this project is really important you know I can say similar things I've worked in community development for a long time some of it away and some of it here and I I think I really feel like the time is now and there's a lot of things that are moving the community forward um, our team our team is so is so great uh, to work with a lot of us you know we're young people a lot of us are young people that have moved back to the Sioux so we care about this you know this isn't like a nine to five job for a lot of us you know we're right, right. you know we're out doing things on the weekends and after hours because we care and we're passionate about it so i think you know being 
be able to work in that environment when things are positive and things are moving forward has been a huge thrill. Um, but I think some of the specific things, um, the mural unveilings this summer, that was really special. Uh, that was really exciting to see. Um, definitely the movie production, um, some of the work that we were doing with the brand, of course, that's really, uh, it's, been, it's been a thrill for me. Uh, so I, th I think just in general being, you know, I'm, I feel so lucky to be part of this team and this energy right now that's happening. So um, every day is something new. Every day is a new uh, exciting challenge. Um, but I think just being part of this team and, and being part of, you know, not only this, this team, but everything that's happening in the community with different organizations and businesses. And it's just, it just feels like you can just feel it, you know, like there's some really great things happening. Uh, so to be a part of that, I'm, I feel very fortunate. And I think things are just going to keep uh, keep getting keep getting better. Um, you know, despite certain challenges we have, of course, we have to turn to those as well. But I think there's a lot of positive things to build on. Well, we all work as a team. The mayor has quite often said to me, "Team Sault Saint Marie to move this community forward." And I've never seen it being moved forward the way it has in the last year. And that leads me to my next question: How can the community be involved with future Sault Saint Marie? suggestions and there's room for everybody to be involved here isn't there yes there's definitely room for everybody to be involved um, you'll see some specific call outs that we do you know to get the community involved for volunteering there'll be much much more of that especially in the spring when we start to roll out the next set of public art projects and murals and painting you'll definitely see some call outs uh, for that um, I think part of it as well is just you know continuing to spread the positive news, even if it's on social media or if it's with your friends and family. Um, I think, you know, having that community pride and being positive in the community, is, it seems like a little thing, but that's a huge thing. And if we can all get on board with that and celebrate what's happening, celebrate the good things, while also recognizing the challenges, of course, um, that's also uh, very helpful. We also have, um, you know, there's different uh, action teams and committees that people can definitely uh, get in, get involved with. As the community cultural plan rolls out, there'll be other calls to action to, uh, to get involved with that. Um, but really, if there's any organization or business out there that even has like a great idea they want to partner with us on, we're always open to, to that. You know, we've partnered with lots and lots of organizations and businesses, and we want to continue to do that. Um, so if you have an idea or you just want to talk something out, you've seen something down in another community, you think maybe something we should do, we should take on, you know, please reach out to us, um, whether it's through email or phone call or social media, however you uh, want to communicate with us. And we're open to, to partner, to hear ideas mm -hmm. and to, uh, like you said, we're, we are Team Sault Ste. Marie. So. You, you never know where you can get that home run idea exactly. the more input you get exactly. the better it gets exactly yeah and there is just quickly there is um, a contact form on the website so lots of people send in ideas that way as well so if you go to futuresm.com um, there's different ways there to get a hold of us all right katie stay right there and we'll take a uh, commercial break and we will be right back after these messages Recently, the Government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. Here, your education is everything. Supporting your true sense of purpose. Here, you'll learn from professors who will understand you, who will challenge you, and offer you support on your journey. Here, you'll study programs built on real values. Business, technology, science, arts and social sciences. Always geared to make a positive difference. 
Here, you'll have a chance to assist in faculty research, leaving your mark wherever you go. Here, you'll focus on what matters to you and impact the world around you. Algoma University. Come take a closer look. Welcome back to On Point. I'm Andy Martins for November 4th, Monday already, and uh, we're live on On TV and live on Facebook. And as usual, I'm thrilled to have um, the future Sault Ste. Marie Communications Coordinator, Katie Elliott, with me, and we're having so much fun. We can't believe how fast that first segment went. Katie, let, <laughs> let's circle back to the public plaza. This is such an important piece of future Sault Ste. Marie. I, I wake up every day saying that, that, you know, I've grown up in Toronto. I've been here for 30 years in Sault Ste. Marie. This needs to happen. Can you outline for our viewers a few reasons why this public plaza needs to happen? Sure, yeah, the public plaza is definitely an important piece. Um, and we had mentioned last week that it was a recommendation from Roger Brooks when he came to the community. But um, it's really, well, there's a few, there's a few different reasons. Um, one, what we're looking at right now with the public plaza is a way that will connect it more for the Queen Street to the waterfront. Um, so that's something that we've heard for a while and there's so many opportunities right. to connect Queen Street more to the waterfront. Um, but this is also a place for uh, for people to gather, uh, to have different programming. Um, for example, you know, there's lots of events happening on Queen Street and some of those will continue to happen, of course, but sometimes road closures can be an issue. So if you have a place where you don't have to do that, um, that's, uh, that can be a good thing. Um, and we wanna activate the space all year round. So having a public area where, you know, there might be a skating rink there in the winter and then in the summer there's, uh, it's just, you know, a, a water feature, for example. Um, you know, being able to have vendors there sometimes, being able to have things like poutine feast or, you know, whatever the case may be. But having this central place is really important. And it's important for, you know, the social fabric of our community because, you know, we want people to, to get out and, and talk to people and meet with people. You know, more and more it seems like we're behind our computers or on our devices. And so we want to create uh, more of a, an environment where people are out and they feel safe. We've heard, you know, lots of times from newcomers to the Sioux or, you know, new people to Sault Ste. Marie, um, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to meet people. So we want to create these public spaces where people can go, they feel some comfortable, they feel safe, there's lots of people around, mm -hmm. um, they can meet people, and we can have this right. atmosphere of community. So it is really, it is really, really important to have to have that space. Um, and it's exciting because there's all different features that, you know, we're looking at right now to activate um, the, the public plaza. Uh, when it starts uh, construction. And that will give us the momentum that we don't have right now. And I will mm -hmm. continue to promote this with every part of my being because it's so important for this city to get this public plaza done. You're right, you're right. And, and once again, it's something that you know you, people can see um, you can go there and experience it, and you're right, it, it does build on the momentum of everything that's happening. Um, it'll be a really beautiful uh, piece of in infrastructure for the community as well, something we can be proud of and show off, and when we have concerts come here, we have, you know, different things come here, you know, like, let's have it at the, the plaza, and let's, you know, so I think it will definitely be a really positive uh, move, uh, or thing moving forward for Sault Ste. Marie. And if anybody wants further proof, take a trip to Toronto, go down to Dundas and Young, <laughs> Dundas Square, and you'll see why a public plaza makes sense. Now, further to that, Bay Street. This is another reason why Bay Street needed to be done, because it all feeds to the same excitement, doesn't it? Having a nice brand new street right there with the public plaza, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. You're right. That's it's all it's all part of the larger strategy. Um, you know, when you first get off the bridge, you know, most people they come down Bay Street, and so it's important that we kind of have you know that fresh new uh, road with the with the boulevards. There'll be you know places for people to to ride their bikes and to walk, and you know it'll be all. 
um, once again, it'll be something we can be proud of. And you're right, it will connect to uh, the, the public plaza and that whole area. So it's really sprucing it up. Um, it's now is the time it's going to be once it's done I think you know everybody's going to be really uh, even more excited about it once they once they see it done um, and the different features it will have and uh, it's you know it's part of building this area with downtown and the waterfront and you know we want this to be um, somewhere where like I said people are, are proud of it it's a place to gather and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's refreshed and updated yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Katie, can you tell us a little bit about two things that are important again? It's everything's important. The Sioux mm -hmm. Network and the Sioux Summit. These things are very valuable recruiting tools. Yeah, so the Sioux, uh, the Sioux Network was developed almost a couple years ago now. Um, and it's really a network of ex Sioux Aids, expats of Sioux St. Marie who live anywhere all over the world. Um, they're connected through the Sioux Network. Um, and there's a there's a couple components of this. So there is a website where you can go on, put your information, so you can look at who else is it, you know, who else is on there. Um, you may, you know, connect with people that you haven't seen in a long time, find out what they're doing. Um, it's an opportunity for people to also find out what's going on in Sault Ste. Marie. So there's news updates on there, so they can see that. We also send out uh, a monthly newsletter to all of the people on the Sioux Network so that they can see uh, different job postings because we of course want to encourage uh, the former Sioux to move back home. Uh, they can see different exciting things happening in the community, so things they may want to get involved with, different opportunities. Um, so it just keeps them in the loop with what's going on in case they want to contribute. Um, and the Sioux Summit, so that was an event that happened um, in Toronto. Um, so we had, we had two events, so we had the Sioux Summit uh, in 2018 and then we had another event in Toronto with the Sioux Network in 2019. So it was really an opportunity to bring a lot of these people together, um, brainstorm ideas for the community, uh, opportunity once again for people to find out what is happening in Sault Ste. Marie and these big improvements that we're working on um, to get their feedback because these are people that really care about the community. That's why they're involved in the Sioux Network. That's why, why they want to hear what's going on because they also have a stake in the community, whether they're, whether they're considering moving back or not. Um, you know, the Sioux has, is a special place, and I think anybody can agree that um, it holds a special place in your heart when you, um, when you move away. Um, my mother, for example, she lives in Texas now, and she follows everything we're doing, and she, you know, she misses it here. And so the Sioux Network is an opportunity for her to connect with former ex-Suites um, and find out what's going on. So these are just a couple of tools. We're hoping to do more things with both the Sioux Summit and the Sioux Network um, in the future. Um, so if people are not aware of it or they have friends or family they think should be a part of this, you can go to uh, SueNetwork.ca and uh, sign up and get more info. Wow, I'm so happy, Katie. Your mother can see this show in Texas. You <laughs> right. could send her a and link. I'm sure she'll be watching, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, give us, our viewers a little bit of an um, kind of a preview for 2020, but Katie can't say too much about this, but a bike trail network is kind of starting to morph out there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So um, the Algoma Trail Network is a, a mountain bike network, but you can do lots of other things on it, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, and it's a partnership between Tourism Sault Ste. Marie, the EDC, Future SSM, and the Sioux Cycling Club. And uh, it's really exciting. It's going to be about 15 kilometers of additional trails. It will be out kind of north of the city in the Hiawatha area, so it will connect there. Um, and in the winter months, there'll be opportunity for, for fat biking, but in the summer months, there'll also be opportunities for mountain biking, for people to walk their dogs, um, for snowshoeing in the winter. So it'll be a multi-use multi, multi -use trail. Um, but there's so much opportunity with these bike trail networks in Sault Ste. Marie. If you look at other communities, even like Copper Harbor, Marquette, and Michigan, what right. they've been able to do with these, these, network, these trails um, is to bring in, you know, millions of dollars worth of revenue uh, for tourism. So we've, there's so much opportunity here. And so we figured, you know, this is the time to look at how we can build these trail networks. Um, and so it's been a great partnership with Future SSM, with tourism, with EDC, and with the Sioux Cycling Club, like I mentioned. 
um, to start doing this. So the EDF of, of the City of Sault Ste. Marie did provide $166,000 to go towards this and that'll be leveraged or hopefully it'll be leveraged with uh, FedNOR dollars. Um, so there is some, you know, some resources behind this. Um, and then once it's completed, the trail will be maintained by the Sioux Cycling Club on an ongoing basis. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's a really um, exciting opportunity for the community that, uh, you know, like I said, the time is now and there's so many opportunities for, uh, for tourism and, you know, having people come here, doing some trails and while they're here, you know, going to some restaurants, staying at local hotels. So all of those things that, of course, uh, visitors bring when they come. Um, so we're hoping to build on that and to kind of become, you know, more of a mecca for, um, for these trail systems and for mountain biking. You build that with search mount and s suddenly you have 10 things that, hey, let's go to Sault Ste. Marie and there's lots to do. Yeah, well there is, you know, like people can come here, they can go up to Stokely, which is, you know, world class, like a lot of the things we have around here, these are world class amenities. Um, so we need to promote them more, we need to build them up more. Um, so absolutely, if you come to the Sioux for a, a weekend in the winter, you know, you can go to Stokely and then you can go to, you know, spend a day at uh, Search Mound, do some downhill skiing, head over to Hiawatha within city limits, do some cross country scenes, snowshoeing, um, do some fab biking, even out Crimson Ridge, so there's, there's some beautiful trails out there. So it's, it's amazing what we have. And then you can top it off with going on the, sk the skating trail downtown and maybe going to a Greyhound game and then Unbelievable. That sounds like a pretty good <laughs> long weekend. <laughs> Unbelievable, so. Katie. You yeah. got me so excited, but the show's over. I, I, you know, we've had so much fun. This is one of the fastest on points I've ever had, but you're <laughs> an amazing guest. Fast. So well, thank you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you again in the early new year because, uh, mm -hmm. folks, this is an important subject. Thank you so much, Thank Katie. you so much for having me. Having Alrighty. Andy. We'll be back to wrap up the show right after these messages. celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954 which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. I'm grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room, create privacy, or both, automatically, no hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place at the right time in style and it's only from hunter douglas Welcome back to On Point. Uh, it's been it's such a thrill having Katie Elliott on, future Sault Ste. Marie. And also later this month, we've got some high profile guests from the city, tourism and EDC, Jennifer King Callen, and Dan Hollingsworth. So it doesn't get any better than that, folks. Tomorrow, Tara Masakawewicz will be here, uh, the Vice President of OPSU, keep us updated on what's going on with all of that. And that's it, folks, for On Point. I'm Andy Martins. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.